Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use a, a couple of different self-serve stations to refuel your airplane. As you fly across the country, you're going to encounter a few different types of self-serve stations. Almost all of these are going to be relatively the same, but there will be a few little things between each one that makes them unique and may cause you trouble along the way and how to use them. So today we'll look at the airplane, look at these systems and see how to best use them in a safe and efficient manner. First, check where the self-service is located before your flight. Check NOTAMs and comments on ForeFlight to see if there is any closures or fuel outages. Next, ensure the airplane is off and set your parking brake and chocks. Check that the magnetos and electrical system is all turned off. Next, if desired, you can put gloves on to protect yourself from lead in the fuel. Next, look for posted instructions and verify the correct fuel type. Ground to the aircraft, then set a ladder up if needed. Back at the fuel pump, we're going to reset the pump counter. Next, we're going to pay for fuel and select only the amount that's needed. All right, so if you wanna come up first and look, you can see it gives us instructions right here for mm -hmm. exactly what to do. So we'll swipe our card with the stripe on top facing left. So I'll go ahead, mm -hmm. stripe facing to the left. All right, now we put our tail number in. So I'll select new. And then we use these buttons to select each one. So the tail number is November. So I'm gonna hit enter letter and then we can use the move right. So we're, since we're going to the numbers, we can go over here and we'll go to the M first. So we'll go back over here. There we go. And then one more. So now that we have the N, we are one five Mike Juliet, so we'll go one five, and then we're on Mike, so we enter letter, and then we can come back again right here and go one, two, three to the J, and then we verify one five Mike Juliet, accept it. So this is a very important part as well because you have the option to fill up, enter a dollar amount, or enter a gallon amount. I would always recommend entering a gallon amount. If you select fill up, it will pre-authorize your card for up to $1,000. So always enter the gallon amount so that way it only pre-authorizes for the gallon amount that you put in. We're gonna select that gallon amount. Today we're going to do 10 gallons. So we'll select one, zero, verified, 10 gallons, and then we'll select enter. And we can verify right here, the fuel grade, 100 low lead, 10 gallons, that's gonna be $45. Pump, 100 low lead, price per gallon, $4.50. We confirm. Nice. There it goes. Locate the pump switch and turn on the pump. So here at Durant, we have an option of the light and the pump, so you can switch the light on here above at nighttime if you need to. You can switch that on. Here's the fuel pump switch. We switch that to on, and then we'll go ahead and pull our pump out to start. Uh, one of the things to look at is, again, making sure that your counter is reset to zero right here. We also see it has a light for if there's water. This system can actually detect water in the sump. So if it does detect water in the sump, this light will be going off. It looks clear. We'll sump our own airplane here in a little bit just to verify. Next, unwind to the hose. So we grab this pump and pull it straight out. You want to make sure that you pull the hose out long enough that you have enough slack to take it up to the top of your airplane or over your wing, however you're going to fuel. Open the fuel cap. We'll have this cap. We'll take off so that way we can begin fueling. I'll take that off once we get up here. All right, so now we're going to put the nozzle down into the fuel tank. You don't want to get too much of an angle because the filler net tab on the inside, the indicator tab, can get bent or cracked but we do want the edge of the nozzle to at least be touching the airplane to provide an extra ground. Once it's in here, we're going to use this nozzle just like a vehicle nozzle, a vehicle pump, and we're gonna pull, and then we're gonna let go and check and see how long it continues to pump. So that way we know once we've filled up, we know how much fuel is going to continue to come out after we release. So then we'll begin fueling, and you have to sit here and hold the fuel, and we'll look back and watch 
and we'll check and see how much fuel is actually going into this by watching the pump. All right, so we're gonna replace the cap on our nozzle and we're going to walk this back so that way it doesn't drag across the ground. We're gonna hold this here to our side, here on the front. We have a black button, the retract button. We'll, se we'll select this. We can make sure it re retracts nice and evenly. And as it gets closer, you want to kind of slow down so that way it doesn't jerk it out of your hand. Go back to the fuel pump switch and turn off the pump. Rewind the ground wire. Whenever you do this, you don't want to, again, let this slide through your hands. This is a metal wire. It does have a coating on it, but sometimes as this sits out in the weather, this coating will degrade and small little wires will stick out. So you want to keep your hand in one spot the entire time while you're rewinding this. And all you have to do is you pull this out a couple notches and it will begin rewinding and you just walk it back in. Put the ladder back in the appropriate place. Collect your receipt, photo or video if necessary. Use a manual fuel checker to double check the fuel level. Lastly, sump the airplane. So on this one, we can see, unlike the one at Durant, this one doesn't have a knob to reset. This one will automatically reset once we start a new transaction. Mm -hmm. Verifying, again, that those are out. Okay, so next, we're gonna go ahead and pay for our fuel. So again, just like the one over there, swipe card with stripe facing the left. So we'll put this in facing the left and then we will select again. Again, we don't want to do a fill up so it doesn't pre-authorize for too much. So we're going to select a gallon amount. In our gallons, we're gonna enter 10 gallons, enter. And we can see 100 low lead, 10 gallons at 446 a gallon. We'll confirm. There we go. Turn on pump handle and begin fueling. So before we do that, again, we're gonna pull our ladder. We're going to come right over here. And this is where, again, another type of switch, unlike Durant, that was just a little knob. This one's a large lever on the side. We push it back and we can hear it actually start to reset and turn the pump on. So there's where the reset happened. Just like before, we're going to grab this and we'll begin to pull it out. All right, we'll take our cap off. Place our nozzle in the fuel tank. Again, not at too much of an angle so it doesn't crack the filler neck. And then we'll begin pumping momentarily and then we'll stop to see how long it takes. You can actually see it takes just a little bit longer for that to turn off. Once we start, I release and there's another two seconds that it's actually putting fuel. So this is important whenever you're filling up to the top of your fuel tanks, you don't want to overflow. So you want to know how early you need to release. Okay. So as I begin to pump, I can look right over here where we saw the counter a minute ago and watch to see how much fuel. Since I did 10 gallons total, I'm gonna to put five in each tank. So I'll begin fueling and watch right over here. And I'll check back and forth. There's three, 
for. I'll release it. There we go. Got about five. There we go. There's five gallons. All right. So now I'll pull this off to the side. I'm going to close my fuel cap. We don't want to ever leave our fuel cap uncovered when it doesn't need to be. So that way debris, water, contaminants don't get in there. Verify that's secure. We'll come around to the other side. Okay, so we'll take the cap off again. Place the nozzle in. Begin fueling. And again, we're watching, verifying that we're getting the right amount, but this should cut off since we only put 10 gallons, it'll cut off once we've reached that 10 gallon mark. There's nine. And there's 10, we release it, let the last little bit of fuel come out so that way we're not dripping it all over the place. Replace our fuel cap, make sure it's secure. All right, and then we'll rewind. So again, another one that's a little bit different. So this one, very similar to how our grounding wire retracts. You pull it out and let it to begin to roll back in. Correct. Make sure it retracts nice and as evenly as possible. Here we go. I didn't print the receipt. So this is where I'll take a picture here because it didn't return the receipt showing that I got 10 gallons. And then, so one thing you can do is either go into the FBO and ask for a receipt, email them and ask for a receipt if you need one, um, or you, the other option that you have is to find someone there at the airport that manages the fuel. Usually there's a phone number that is on all of these that you can call an airport manager to, a, to be able to get that fuel receipt if you need it. Okay. All right, but I've got the picture and then I'll take a picture of the price per gallon. There we go, so I can show I have 10 gallons and then I'll be able to show my account as well.
I'm gonna take my gloves off. I have all my trash in here. Always make sure that you clean up after yourself. Uh, a lot of aviation is on the honor system, just like rolling your cords up after you've used them, making sure you keep the area clean. So much of aviation is on the honor system, so be nice to the next pilot and clean up after yourself. Make sure you put things back the way that they're supposed to be. Last but not least, always make sure you collect your receipt so that way if you're on a wet lease or need to get reimbursed for the fuel that you used, you can do that. Alright guys, thanks for watching the video today. Uh, we showed you three different types of self-serve pumps that you might encounter during your time flying. Uh, again, this was not an all-inclusive view of what you might encounter, but it at least showed you how to find the different types of switches, instructions, or anything else like that that you might encounter. Please like, subscribe, and comment below if you have any more questions, and we'll see you in the next video.